So today we're going to learn how to change your visuals based on a selection. Now this is a common request because canvas space is limited in Power BI. While by utilizing the bookmark navigator, we can create interactive buttons that allow you to change between your visuals. And as a bonus, we're also going to learn how to create these icons that allow you to see the visual that you're about to change. This is really neat and easy to implement. So let's go ahead and learn how to do so. But before we do, I'm Raja, the Power BI guy. And if this is your first time coming across the channel, do like and subscribe for more data content. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. You can switch between any visualization type, meaning it doesn't matter what visuals you actually switch between, and you can do multiple visuals or a singular visual at a time. It's completely up to you. So in this example, let's start off with a line and stat column chart. And in this chart, let's bring in our month name, our sales into the Y axis, and then our profit into the line Y axis. And now that we have our visual, let's go ahead and place this where we would like this visual to switch from. So let's get that into position. Let's move on to our second set that we'll switch into. So for this example, I'll use a new card visual. And in this, let's bring in our sales and then profit. I'll make this slightly smaller. And underneath this, let's go ahead and use a stacked bar chart. And for this, once again, sales and then profit. I'll turn off the title, the legend, and in our X axis, let's turn off the values. And then for our colors, for our sales, let's set that to gray. And then for our profit, we'll set that to blue. Perfect. Now that we have our second set of visuals, let's go ahead and group them. It's very important that we do this because it makes our life a lot easier later down the road. So if we head over to the view tab, if we select selection and then from there, if we hold shift while selecting our visuals, head over to the selection pane, right click group and then select group. This will now have all of your elements in one group. This will make our life a lot easier once we start working with bookmarks. Now that we have it in a group, let's go ahead and place that above our initial visual because we want them to switch between each other. They have to be in the same position. Now that we have them layered on top of each other, let's head over to view once again, bookmarks, and now we can begin to create our different states for our visuals. So let's go ahead and turn off the first group that we created and add a new bookmark. So if we call this, uh, let's call this line chart. And now we have our first bookmark. If we turn this visual off and then turn on our other states or our other set of visuals, what we can do is add another bookmark. So let's go ahead and call this uh, table view. So we have our two states and if we switch between them, we can do so. Now that we have our bookmarks, we can then insert a bookmark navigator. So if we go to insert uh, buttons and then from there navigator and then select bookmark navigator, we can see we have all of our bookmarks. Now this is a top tip and it will save you a bit of pain. If you have multiple bookmarks on your page, so I have another set of bookmarks in a different page. If we go to our bookmark navigator, we can see all of them. Now to turn off the ones we don't want to see, if we go to the format pane and then from there select bookmarks, what we'll find is we can't see the new bookmarks that we've created. And the reason for that is we need to group these. So I've already grouped the first set. So we could select that and use our first set of um, bookmarks. But for our second set, there is no option. So if we now select our first bookmark, right click and then select group, let's call this live demo. And let's insert our second bookmark into this group. And now we might have to refresh this. So let me delete the bookmark navigator and insert it again. What we'll find is in bookmarks, we can now see our second group. And if we select live demo, we now have our bookmark. And if we select them, we can see it's changing between your states. Now, another top tip, if you're working with slicers, what you'll find is, so let's go ahead and create a slicer. And then if I bring in subcategory, and if we make a selection, what we'll find is if we select between our different states, because they're essentially snapshots, they're not going to retain our slicer selections because in our other state, it's not selected. Well, you can change that functionality by going over to your bookmarks and then turning off data. And if we do that for both, so we turn off data. Now, if we make our slicer selection between our bookmark changes, it is going to retain our data or whatever our filters were. So that's an important tip. 
Now, let's go ahead and format our buttons. And to do so, if we select our bookmark navigator, head over to style, and then for our fill in our default state, let's set that to gray. And then our selected, so if we go to selected, let's set that to green. And let's just turn up the transparency. And then for our shape, we're going to use a rounded rectangle and let's make this 47%. And now if we make it slightly smaller, we can see we have our buttons that allow us to change between our states. Let's look at an alternative with buttons that have icons for the visuals that we'll be switching into. This is really simple to build and to do so, if we just select any visual, we can see when there's no data in the visual, it has an icon. Let's go ahead and screenshot that. And then once you screenshot the icon, go ahead and save that somewhere. And at this stage, what you can do is head over to insert buttons. And then if you select blank, we can now insert this image that we've just created. So I'll go ahead over to button style. Let's select uh, icon and then icon type as custom. And now we can insert our image. So let's go ahead and insert one. And if we center that and then set the image fit to fit, and then from here, let's head over to size and style. Let's turn on the background, the visual border and the shadow. And for the background, let's set that to 100%. The visual border, let's make that white. Let's turn the rounded corners up. And then for the shadow, let's set that to center and then set that to a gray. And to actually make this switch our visuals, if we now head over to action, turn that on and then the action type as bookmark, we can then select our bookmarks. So we have our first, let's go ahead and create a second one. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. And then for this image, I will, and for this button, let's go ahead and change the image. So I already have a screenshot. Uh, let's make this a donut chart. And the action for this, let's set this to our table view. And now we can switch between our two buttons. So the difference is the bookmark navigator auto creates the different bookmarks. The second approach requires you to create individual buttons, but it's slightly more bespoke where you can set images for your different types. And that's the end of this video. Hopefully it was useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more data content. And without further ado, I'm checking out.